Hello, everyone. We're glad you tuned in to episode 30 of our scooter adventure crossing all parts of Vietnam. We're currently doing a series of traveling in the Central Highlands and South Central Coast after visiting Binh Thuan Province in the last episode. Today, we're going to Lom Dong, where the famous city of Da Lat belongs in the north. Most people know this city, but what about its south? So for us to hit up and show you as many other beautiful places as possible in this province conveniently, we're only going to cross the south in this video and visit Da Lat on our way back after the province of Dak Nom and Dak Lak. It's just another time to get an oil change for the vehicle, just to get it prepared and well prepared for all of the mountainous terrain and all of the long trips. In this episode, we'll ride up the mountains for the first time and go through the endless rain to finally be able to see this massive and serene lake. Lots of unprompted snacks will be picked and enjoyed along the way as well. We'll also visit these pagodas, especially surrounded by lots of tea plant gardens. Finally, we'll bring you to a scenic tourism area where we descended on an alpine coaster to reach one of the most beautiful waterfalls in Lam Dam province. And before embarking on our adventure today, please help motivate us by hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to our channel to continue going around Vietnam with us. Now, let's set off to Lam Dam. So far, we've ridden around 200 kilometers on this journey, starting from Saigon to get to Mui Ne in Phan Thiet City. And we'll rack up 178 more kilometers to go to our desired spots in the south of Lam Dong province. We finally have an earlier start. It is around 8.15, I think, 8.30? 8.30. Ah, 8.30. Because today's trip is gonna be the longest. Anyway, right now we're also gonna have to hunt for breakfast and coffee. I want steam buns for breakfast. What do you want? Anything? He'll go with whatever I choose. Nah, it's more like we'll go with whatever they have on the road and... We're gonna have some fish cakes up. Sounds yummy, okay. After grabbing the bang mi, we came here to this cafe to eat it. One for you. Thanks and drink our favorite coffee to get ready for the long ride. Coffee and sub. I gotta tell ya, I'm really excited to ride the Lam Dong. I know it's gonna be steep and all, but the beginning of our trip today seems pretty nice. So I'm just gonna enjoy it no matter what. <laughs> To help the scooter run better, David stopped to give it an oil change. Look at the color of the oil, it's so bad already. And hopefully after changing the oil, it's going to be a lot more stable because it's been a little slow and it's not that good anymore, it's not that sensitive and strong anymore, so that's why I'm changing it. One thousand is supposed to be the amount of kilometers that you ride only for one new oil change. Getting back on the road for another 20 minutes, we started to leave all the populated areas and coastal landscapes behind to enter what seemed a bit more of the highlands. Lots of rice fields and mountains, along with this super nice road, make our ride so enjoyable. Don't hit the kid. And from here, it took us less than 10 minutes to finally hit up the mountain terrain. Up the first mountain we go. Man, going up this mountain made me feel very nervous because there are sharp corners. You can't even see what's coming around the bend. And sometimes the trucks will ride in the middle of the road. And I'm just so nervous going up. And then also, to top it off, the incline is so high. We just, I just saw a sign that said 8% incline. So you know that's steep. Like back then in An Yang, another province in the southwest region, we thought that all the way up to the strolling of temples and pagodas is so bad. But here, the inclination, the steepness of this whole thing, this whole mountain, is on a completely different level. I gotta apply that snake technique. <laughs> like I'm going all over the place like this in order yeah. for the scooter to gain some momentum climbing up the hill. 
Oh yeah, do you remember the lion dance we talked about in episode 19 when we were in Sopchang province? We saw many groups performing it along the road, making our ride way more interesting. After two hours of being on the scooter, we needed to take a break because going up that hill was crazy and I think my back is hurting a lot more than what it was earlier. How many hills did we pass already? Too many to count. Too many to count. So as we are taking our shelter here, just for a little break, somebody is deciding to come to say hello. I think she's lost the rest of our herd. One thing that I don't think we can see often in any other part of Vietnam is this. They look kind of like dried squid. She's drying some bamboo shoots. In the highlands of Vietnam, locals engage in the practice of collecting bamboo shoots from the mountains, a seasonal activity that reflects their deep connection with nature and traditional ways of living. After collection, these bamboo shoots are often spread out along roadsides to dry under the sun. This method of drying is a traditional preservation technique that enhances the shoots' flavor and longevity, allowing them to be stored and used over an extended period. When riding through this area, it's easy to notice the unique smell of this staple ingredient in many local dishes here. Dried bamboo shoots go great in so many dishes with pretty much any kind of protein. But our favorite way to eat bamboo shoots is with duck meat inside of this absolutely delicious and tasty soup. Okay, enough about food. We're now edging closer to the province of Lam Đồng. There's a link between these two provinces that we want to see before reaching Bao Lộc City. And that's all we knew until we spotted this beautiful area. You see how beautiful the scenery is? This is what we saw a lot of on the way up here. Right as soon as we could pull over to a good spot, I immediately scouted the drone out there to help us complete the picture of how grand this area is. So from the drone shot, that was a gigantic and long lake that goes through all of the valley down there. And it looks so clean and blue with the water. Turns out, it's a different lake called Dami with an area of around 700 hectares created artificially to be part of a hydroelectric power complex. The one we rode up here to see is Ham Tuan Lake, which is three times bigger than what you're seeing right now. Both of these lakes were developed in 2001 when they built the dams using the water from La Nga River. Surrounded by lush forests and mountains, these lakes offer stunning hidden gems for ecotourism and outdoor activities. Surprisingly, not many know about them yet, hence they exude that untouched natural beauty that provides outdoor adventures away from the crowded tourist spots. But we're not very lucky today as the sky started to change on a dime. So once again, we are getting caught in the rain and we got to pull over to pull out our raincoats. So time to put on the raincoat. The thing is, we couldn't just zip towards the other lake fast as there were so many beautiful lookouts like this one. So that's the lake that David was talking about earlier. And I've never seen a view like this in my life. The highlands are incomparable to the coastal cities that we've seen. Yeah. Like each one has its own unique and distinct beauty. From here, it only took us 15 minutes to get to the periphery of Ham Tuan Lake. We already got to a pretty, pretty good altitude. But then now looking up and we still have to keep climbing like this. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean like how much further up that we have to climb with a scooter. Ugh. But the higher up you get, the better the scenery is, so it's all worth it. That's right, but the rain gets heavier while there's nobody up here. No coffee shops or tourist facilities, so we decided to go around until we hit the dam of this massive lake and then take a U-turn to head towards Baolok City. Once again, that dual side. Lush green valley and the thing that provides. There are quite a few retaining walls like this to store the water in the lake for hydroelectric power generation and irrigation purposes. There are also lots of fish down there as well. But what I like the most is the serene environment, coupled with its scenic landscapes and beautiful roads. There's gonna rain in the mountain or in this foresty area. I don't think it's gonna stop at one point. 
It's gonna be very long. Oh well, I'm honestly very satisfied with what we've been seeing around here. And if this is what the highlands of Vietnam are all about, I think I'm gonna love our adventures here so much. After reaching the dam, we routed back heading to Bao Lop City. It's now around 2.20 p.m. and we haven't had lunch yet. No restaurants up here, so we needed some snacks to hold out until we reached the city. It's only around 50 kilometers, so I think we'll be fine. It's always weirdly fun to eat snacks while riding like this, and right as soon as we descended from the lakes, the rain stopped too. Do you know rain is one of the four main natural factors that help people grow lots of amazing things here? The road we're on reflects the agricultural distinction and richness of the highlands. Screening through this area, we saw lots of hills filled with coffee trees, avocados, and durians. Sustainable farming practices are one thing, but much of the soil in these highland areas is volcanic in origin, enriched with minerals and nutrients. With cooler temperatures than the lowlands, distinct wet and dry seasons, and high elevations, things are grown for both quantity and quality. So my guess is, is this could have been old volcanic soil, depending on how big the volcano was, which gives this soil here that reddish hue. As we are going through this road, the fragrance of durian is all over the place. This is like really potent with the smell. <laughs> yeah, but we still don't see any restaurant to eat lunch while the sky is getting gloomy again. So it seems like we stopped just in time. Can't beat the din from the traffic. So what I was trying to say is that we pulled into this little place just in time because it started to rain again. And although these fried chicken pieces can't make a proper lunch, they really hit the spot. From this place, it only took us 30 minutes to enter the city of Bao Lop to find a hotel to stay for the night. And this is our dinner. So they have a few dishes to, to make with the duck meat, porridge, and also mm -hmm. some cabbage salad over here. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Duck meat all around. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. So we use this and he already poured in all the sauce here, so respectively it's gonna be very saucy and well seasoned. Good. I have to say, like, the porridge kind of hits the spot after being so cold. Mm. Good morning from Lao Lop City. Wow, we didn't get to see much of it yesterday because it was so rainy and dreary and we were trying to hurry to the hotel. But now that I get a better look at it, it seems pretty developed here. Besides Bao Lop and the more famous city, Da Lat, the province of Lom Dong still has 10 other districts to contribute to its massive area of about 9,700 square kilometers. But to explore the whole province, its two cities are all it takes. Being situated at a lower altitude of about 800 meters above sea level compared to Dalat, Bao Lop is a bit warmer than his big brother, but it still benefits from a cooler climate that is pleasant and conducive to tea and coffee cultivation. The city is also known for its pagodas, and we'll go visit two of them after our breakfast. So the next destination is going to be that pagoda of the green tea leaves. So it's only going to take us about seven more minutes to get there. And the road here, I have to say, it is pretty nice. There's been a couple fields along both sides. And I think what I forgot to mention is the weather. It's now around 20 degrees and it's perfect for us to enjoy this short ride before reaching T Pagoda. Whoa, there's that gate. Oh yeah, I have an important question. Is there anything I can rub here for good luck? Maybe that statue? Chua Da, or Tea Pagoda, distinctively stands out not only for its simplicity, but also for its deep-rooted connection to the local culture and lifestyle of the Lumbian Highlands. So this whole pagoda seems a little more different compared to all of the ones that we visited before. It is quite different and unique in its own way. The name Jota Tea Pagoda comes from the tea plant, a crop integral to the livelihoods of the people in this area, chosen to honor this special agricultural practice. 
Unlike other local temples, Tea Pagoda is modest in size but leaves a lasting impression with its serene beauty and the distinct architecture that reflects the ancient Vietnamese style with influences from the ethnic minority cultures of the highland areas. So the way that people come here and practice in this pagoda is totally different compared to how it is in a lot of the areas, a lot of the temples and pagodas in southwest Vietnam because first of all they don't have a lot of shops, a lot of like booths to sell you know stuff to people for example incense or flowers or some of the offerings and second of all if you walk inside of the main building of the pagoda here you don't smell or you don't see smoke or you don't smell a lot of the incense because they they just come here and all they use is their hands in order to bow a little bit and that's how they pray at the altar. Positioned on a hill filled with green tea plants, it offers a tranquil space for meditation and spiritual practices. One of the temple's most iconic features is the Heaven's Gate, a circular door frame situated on a high terrace, framing a visually striking image that symbolizes the gateway between the earthy realm and the heavens. This spot has become a favorite for many photographers and visitors. But if you don't know much about Buddhism, you might have no idea what to do and how to enjoy this place. A tiny little entrance with two bamboo trees on both sides. And there you are. This is an open view that's overlooking a beautiful lake down there. I love how they've taken such good care of this green tea leaf field. Like you said earlier, they just pruned everything it looks like. Yeah, they pruned only the top parts of the plants. And by pruning, I'm not saying that they're going to toss all of the top parts of the plants away. They're going to use it for tea to drink or they're going to sell it away for some economic purposes. Okay, I wandered down here because it's pretty cool, but now I'm hearing some weird sounds that I'm not used to. Like, the birds are fine. I get the birds, but then there was like a little hooting and I don't know if it could be like a monkey or something and I'm close to the bananas. I don't know. Not familiar with the wildlife here in Vietnam, so I'm gonna walk away. After Tea Pagoda, we still have two other spots to visit. And since they're on our way to the next province, it just makes more sense that we go back to our hotel, check out, and bring everything with us. All right, we just came back to this hotel from the Pagoda of the Green Tea Leaves. Now we're packing everything and being about to check out of this hotel room and heading on to the next destination, the monastery. There have been a few raindrops landing on us, but it's not that heavy, so let's see if we can escape the rain. This monastery is only 17 kilometers out from the city, but we honestly don't care much about the distance and time while riding there because everything looks so tranquil and beautiful on the way. Coupled with the cool weather, the diversity of lush plants, flowers, and crops here makes us feel like we're scooting through a garden. We even drove off the main road to immerse ourselves in the serene vibes better with no properly paved path needed. For this area, what I really love is how the people here use the terrain to their advantage. They're not changing anything in order to suit their needs. No, they are using it as is. The roads here, they wind around and go with the mountain and hills rather than just straight through. So then that changes nothing. There's also many gravel roads leading down farther into the valley. For the houses here, what I find really interesting as well is that it must be very difficult to build the foundation of the house where it is. So for some of the houses, you can see that they are built out onto the mountain. So they did a little bit of leveling, maybe trying to add in some extra dirt to make sure that the house lays flat, but that is about it. The back of the house looks over the entire valley. And because of our little sightseeing adventure, it took us almost 50 minutes to get to the monastery. This monastery has the best location of this whole thing. That's why it's the most beautiful and most visited place in the entire city. 
The location is only one of the reasons people come here to visit this place. So this monastery is called Tu Vien Bát Nha, and it is a Zen Buddhist monastery that serves as a spiritual retreat and community for monks, nuns, and lay people practicing in the tradition of Thich Nhat Thanh, a globally revered Vietnamese Zen master, poet, and peace activist. Renowned for his powerful teachings on mindfulness, compassion, and peace, he founded the Plum Village tradition and authored numerous influential books on Buddhism and mindfulness. For medicants and practitioners in Vietnam, this monastery is among the few places they can come to learn and practice meditation in his tradition, reflecting the deep respect and influence of Thich Nhat Hanh's work in his homeland and the broader Buddhist community. Nestled amidst lush forest and coffee plantations, the monastery offers a tranquil environment conducive to practicing being in the present. I just feel like I'm trying to enjoy all of the scenery that this place has to offer. I swear, like it's a panoramic view. If I look to my right, I can see some of the houses and fields, but then to the left, it's so open and you can see the next mountains over. I also had like a little sneak peek behind the temple and it overlooks the rest of the valley, so it's kind of like a drop off at the back. We heard that visitors could experience the communal living aspects here, such as sharing meals, working meditation, and living in harmony with others. But for people who don't meditate like me, the natural surroundings and the tranquil atmosphere of the monastery can provide a break from the hustle and bustle of daily life. It's a place to recharge, reflect, and reconnect with nature. After the monastery, we got back on the road to hit up our last spot in the south of Lom Dom, which happens to be the very first waterfall I will see in Vietnam, and it's only five kilometers away. So it seems like there's only one type of ticket here mm -hmm. and it's gonna be like an all-inclusive ticket for you to experience one, two, three, four, five, six different activities. All right, so that means we can go on the Alpine coaster? Yeah, and then we can also watch that um, movie at the 7D cinema. Mm. And then we have the Alpine coaster and also we're going to be able to use one of the elevators that they have here to go sightseeing at that waterfall, Dampuy. Ooh, okay. Sounds perfect. How much is it for the ticket? 250. So there is the Alpine coaster. It goes from the top of this building right at the entrance all the way down. And I can't see where the rest of it goes, but it goes off over there in the distance. That means we are on our way to the Alpine Coaster. <laughs> Here we got some drums, gourds. Those are gourds that you grow and then like they're hollowed out and you carry water in those. There's some needle woven baskets too. You want to know something else? What? This place smells antique. Antique. <laughs> Similar to uh, what? The president, the Independence Palace. All right. Thank you. I think this one we're gonna be able to get on the same one. Money, 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 money. I got it. <laughs> All right. Got a good handle on the bags. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I can't go all the way anyway because my legs are like pretty wide open. Go. Not too fast, not too slow. Okay, is this fast enough? No. Faster? Can you? <laughs> oh, it smells so great out here. The Denbury Waterfall Tourist Area in Lam Dong is quite interesting. This is the first time we've come to a tourist area where the main features are the waterfalls. There are two beautiful waterfalls here, and most people come here to see the one named Dampuri. We're now on the Alpine coaster to descend the second one first because it's farther, and we'll be back for the grandest one later. For adventure enthusiasts, the Alpine coaster offers an exhilarating ride through the forested slopes of the area. It's a gravity-powered ride that winds down the mountain, giving riders control over their speed. The coaster blends speed and scenic views, providing an adrenaline-pumping way to explore the natural beauty of the region. I think you did good on controlling the coaster. Well, considering that I couldn't really move everything very well. 
This waterfall is called Dasara, and it may not boast the same height as Danbury, but it offers a picturesque cascade that flows gently into the crystal clear pool below. The waterfall is surrounded by verdant foliage, creating a peaceful ambiance that enchants visitors. The sound of the water, the cool air, and the greenery all contribute to the feeling of being in a secluded natural paradise. It feels really nice here and if we didn't have to head to the next province today, we'd be here and just sit around to enjoy this fresh and rejuvenating environment. All right, so to get out of this area where the waterfall is, we have to take that alpine coaster and go back up. Now it's time for us to go to see some 7D movie. <laughs> It was okay. The room was dark and it wasn't a movie that we were watching. It was more like a short clip designed to give you the feeling of flying and avoiding objects. The seat moved to trick you into that better too. And even with the glasses, it was still pretty blurry, but interesting experience one way or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First hand experience. After the 7D theater, we went down to the main floor and checked out their store. This is what we expected to see, tea and coffee. Of course, right? This land is so rich and fertile for these. The area is named after the Danbury waterfall and it means waiting in the local Gahal language, stemming from a moving legend about love and waiting. The Gahal people are just among many other minority groups here. The legends say there was a young couple from the Gahal tribe who was deeply in love but they were prevented from being together due to tribal conflicts or familial disagreements. Overcome with despair, the woman wept for her lost love and it is said her tears formed the waterfall which has continued to flow ever since. The name Danbury symbolizes her endless wait and hope for her beloved to return. When we read about the story, we honestly regretted not being quicker to visit this waterfall, the centerpiece of the tourist area. But since I've been talking about Ferris wheels so much during this trip, David decided to ride the wheel and then visit the mystical cascade. Finally riding a Ferris wheel together after what, eight years? It is all misty in the canopy of the trees ahead of us. It looks kind of like it's from a fairy tale. Uh oh. It's raining. It started to rain so hard right now. I think because we're also up higher, there's no coverage. Unfortunately, it was raining way too hard and we were running out of time, so we decided to skip the waterfall. Go, go, go! You're playing bumper car? But don't worry, because in the next episode, we will show you our later trip to the province of Dakno. In that one, we will get to see one of the best, but most secluded waterfalls in the highlands. Going through a lot of beautiful forested areas and not arriving to our set place until dark. And we'll stay at a unique homestay to learn more about the coffee they make here. Also, we will attempt to go see the longest volcano sprawling in Vietnam and show you what we can. So, if you like our trip in this episode, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to continue watching all of our future adventures. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. I'm still awake with a heart in two